Adobe released a new generative AI tool for Photoshop and you've probably seen all the amazing things people are creating with it. Generative Fill lets you change parts of an image, expand images beyond their border and even merge images together with just a simple prompt. But I'm going to show you a different use for this tool. I'm going to show you how you can use it to bring your images to life and create cool animations like these in Photoshop and After Effects. And this works for all types of images, for artwork, photography, illustrations, concept art, and also whether created with or without AI. My goal for this video is to use it alongside other AI generative tools like Midjourney to create a full two minute short film. So make sure to watch to the end to see the final result. So for the story, I just asked ChatGPT to write a beautiful fairy tale for me. And I took the word beautiful really seriously. Like there's not much happening in the story. I could have injected like an evil stepmother or something to make the story a bit more exciting. But in the end, I really liked the relaxed style of it. And for the voices, I used 11 labs and I just put in my generated text here and played around with the settings until I found something that I liked. I then played around with different styles in Midjourney and I ended up going for like this colorful concept art style as I think it fit the story really well. And this is the prompt that I used for pretty much all the images. To get even more consistent styles and characters, I sometimes injected an image into the following prompts. So if you have an image, for example, that you like, you can just right click on it, copy link, and then put the link into your next image prompt. And then using the image weight parameter, IW. So I'm just going to put a uh, 0.1 because I just want to have like a little bit of the style and the colors influencing the next image, but I don't want to use the same composition or have like the same subjects in it. This technique works really well when you want to generate consistent styles for a story. So before we can start animating, we need to install the Adobe Photoshop beta. So just go to your Adobe Creative Cloud. I'm sorry, this one is German for some reason, but go down to categories and there you can see beta applications. And then you just install the one for Photoshop. So let's start with the establishing shot for the film. Here you can see the serene village, the beautiful village of Willowbrook. So for this shot I want to create a camera move where the camera is like up in the sky and comes down and reveals the beautiful village. So first we need to expand the image a little bit because we don't have too much sky. So let's use the crop tool and just drag out the top part of the image. And I'm just going to use the rectangular marquee tool to select the image and then you will see the generate a fill box down here. And if we just want to generate a new part of the image that's based on the rest of the image, we just click on generate a fill and we don't have to put in a prompt. So then you have to wait a little bit and it will give you three options. And the first one already looks really promising. Let's do a second one. This one not so well. This one is also cool, but I don't like the tree up here. When you generate, it will also create the mask for the layer that you selected for generating. And we don't need that, so I'm just going to delete that. So just click on it, delete it, and I'm just going to call that base image. So now that we have this new base image, we need to generate the whole image for the background, middle ground, and foreground. Let's start with the back and work our way to the front. So this time I'm using the lasso tool and I'm just going to select the sky here. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but we don't want to generate a new sky. We want to generate the rest of the image. So down here you have a button to invert the selection. So click on that and you'll see now it select the rest of the image and hit generate to fill. So I'm just going to stick with this one, even though this sky looks a bit too realistic. It's like way down at the bottom and we are going to probably never see this part because it will be obstructed by all the other layers of the image. Again, I'm going to delete the mask and let's call this 00, zero sky. Let's go back to the base image. I think for simplicity, I will merge the mountains with this part, even though it would be better to separate those out too, but I'm trying to keep this short. So now I selected everything that's to the front of the part that I want to isolate. And now we have this image. Again, I'm going to delete the mask and call it 01 background. And now let's do two more layers. This is like our main la layer. And then I also want to separate this foreground here. So let's do the focus area of our image, the middle ground here. Because we're going to mask it out later, we don't have to do anything to the background. We just need to get rid of the foreground. So I think this counts as foreground and maybe these rocks over here and this little tree. So I'm just going to select 
these, hit generate to fill, leave the prompt window empty and hit generate. And this worked quite well. Let's delete the mask again, call it 0, 2 and let's do middle ground. And be because we're just going to mask out the foreground, we, need, we don't need the generative tool for the foreground, we just duplicate our layer and I'm just going to call it 0.3 foreground. Let's put the sky to the bottom and just order the images so we have like sky, background, middle ground, foreground. So now we can build up our image like this. We have the sky, we have the background, we have the middle ground and we have the foreground. The next thing we need to do is we need to mask out the different parts of the image. So we don't have to do anything for the sky. That's just our background. But now to actually see that sky, we have to get rid of the sky in this image. And the easiest way is probably to use Photoshop's Select and Mask tool. And then you can just paint in the image and select all the parts that you want to keep. You can of course change the brush size and by hitting Alt you can deselect part of the image. So I think this still belongs to the sky. And it selected some parts of this tower here. So we come back here and refine it again. Now here it's a bit tricky. We need to do a few brush strokes for it to get it right. For this image you can see that it kind of blurs the, the edges and for this painterly look uh, they should be more sharp and you can make them a bit sharper by bumping up the contrast. So then when you're done with your selection you can output to new layer or I will just use layer mask and it will get rid of the background. So now you can see when we activate the sky we can actually move that around. So yeah let's do the middle ground next. Let's just go to select and mask and just select the houses and the foreground here. Also making sure to include some of these individual leaves here because I think they really help to bring this, bring out this painterly look of the image. And let's take some time to, to mask out this bridge. Okay, so now we have our middle ground selected. I'm just going to bump up the contrast again a little bit so you can see that here um, it will sharpen the edges a little bit. And the good thing about the layer mask is you can see if you have these mistakes like here, you can come back with just the brush tool and use black to um, delete parts of the image and you can use white to bring back parts of the image. Okay, we can already start with the foreground, so let's do the same thing again. Only took like a minute or something. So yeah, we're pretty much done here in Photoshop. We have all our different layers ready to animate. So let's just save this file as uh, just a regular Photoshop file and go to After Effects. Now let's bring that Photoshop file into After Effects. You can just drag and drop that in and make sure to um, choose Import Kind Composition. So if you go into this composition by double clicking, you can see that this is set up the exact same way as our Photoshop file. And I don't want to animate in this composition. I will just leave that in for reference and I will select all the layers that we need to um, animate. So I select all the visible layers and then I come up here to create a new composition. Because the image is not that high resolution, I'm just going to choose HD. Then I'm going to control V to import all the images. The next thing I want to do is click here and create a new camera. And we want to create a one node camera. And what that means compared to a two node camera, a two node camera has like a point of interest. So when you use the position values to animate it, it will go around this point of interest. But I just want to create like a parallel movement down. So I'm going to choose the one node camera. If we animate this, we can see nothing happens because first we need to select all these layers and make them 3D layers. So first of all, let's just start by spreading out the images a little bit. So let's use like a negative value of like minus thousand and you can see it's very big here. It's huge now and we can't even see it. So hit S and scale it back down so we can see it and it kind of matches with the side here. So the middle ground I usually leave that at zero and the background let's do something like 5000 and for the sky let's do uh, I don't know 10,000 maybe maybe 8,000. 8, scale the sky so that it fits our image and let's also scale the background. 
So now it's a bit messed up because the images are not in the right position yet. So let's roughly lay out our camera move. I'm just going to put the camera here and you can just hit the little stopwatch and then I'm going to go to the end of the composition and yeah, just animate the camera down so we have the final framing of our image. So let's bring back the original composition. So this was a bit higher and the foreground is way up here. So let's bring that down. It's still a bit, it feels too far away. So let's hit P and just do like 1,500 maybe. So now it's a lot closer. Bring it back down to where it fits, something around here. And now if we look at our camera move, I think I like that. Let's, let's put the camera even higher in the sky here. And if we now look at our camera move, we can see it slowly comes down to our village here. The next thing I want to do is like to smooth out the keyframes a little bit. With the standard keyframes, it's just a linear interpolation and that looks very unnatural. So let's select both the keyframes and you can hit F9 or um, right click keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. And this will just kind of smooth out the motion. So it starts slow, um, it gets quicker and then it um, slows down at the end again. So yeah, this camera move is the main effect that I wanted to show you, but since we are already in After Effects, we can do a lot more to bring this image to life. For example, in this shot, we have this flag on the building. And why not animate this? So I just created a new composition with a triangle inside, and then in the main composition, I added a wave warp effect for the wiggling, um, a tint effect for the colors, and some animated noise to kind of create shading for this flag. I also wanted to animate the water a little bit. So what I did is I roughly masked out the water. So then I duplicated this mask and set it to subtract and now everything is gone. But then I set the mask expansion to a negative value and used the feather tool to yeah, kind of feather it out so we have a stronger effect on the edges of the water and a lighter effect in the middle so that it kind of blends together with the original image. So this ripple effect is basically just an animated noise where I animated the evolution and the offset turbulence. And I also deselected uniform scaling and set the width like really high so that it has this stretched look. I just added a wave warp effect to make it a little bit more wiggly, a little bit more realistic like water. And then I used the tint effect choosing colors from the water of the original image. And then I just came to track mat and set the track mat to the mask that I just built. And now the effect looks like this. And if we add it on top of the original image, it looks like this. The next thing I wanted to do is to bring some life to the foreground. We have this tree here and I wanted to have it wiggle in the wind a little bit. So again, I just used a wave warp, played around with the settings so that it moves pretty much the whole tree. And then to add some more detail into this uniform motion, I added another turbulence displays where I also animated the offset turbulence. And I think it looks okay for like a stylized tree wiggles. And then the last thing I did was to just add a particle system. And I think I just used the particle world. I guess you can do it with any um, particle system that comes with After Effects. And I just put the emitter to the side here and choose direction axis for animation and played around with the values until I had something like this, where just like the triangles fly into the image and then they fall down. So I set the gravity really low and also you can set them to triangles here. You can also create a new solid and mask out the shape of a leaf and use that. But I wanted to have more stylized leaves so I choose the triangles and added a rough and edge this effect to um, kind of round these shapes a little bit. But you can see they're still falling in a very uniform way. So I added another turbulent displays to kind of fake just some turbulence in the air. Next, this is a shot I really like. This is the first time we see Lily, our protagonist. So in Photoshop, I, I separated all the layers again. And this time I selected her just by using the select subject um, tool, which uses AI to figure out the subject in your image. And now we have her separated. If you want to refine this mask even more, uh, for example, around the hair, you can still go to select and mask. And for example, click refine hair 
or use the refine brush. This often helps with like leaves and foliage and hair in this case. And then in After Effects, I created a, just a very subtle camera move um, towards her face. And I also added a wiggle expression because I wanted the camera to feel a little bit more handheld. The next thing I did was because I had all the um, leaves on a separate layer, I just took that layer and just keyframed it so that it moves down. But you can see they are very uniform. So what I did, what I always did, I added a turbulent displace to kind of fake the turbulence in the air and that worked really well. But then I also created another shape layer with just some random swiggly paths here that I wanted to um, some leaves to follow. And what you can do then when you create all these paths, you can come down here to the shape layer, click on path, window, and then create nodes from path. And this will create all these null objects that you then can parent elements to. I also added god rays and this again the god rays are just a noise that is um, where I deactivated uniform scaling pretty similar to the water that we did and I deactivated uniform scaling and used a corner pin to bring it into this um, perspective shape. I animated the evolution and then I used screen and uh, tint node to color it and to put it on top of the final image. I also wanted to affect that like the wind is blowing through her hair and that's why I used the puppet effect. I first created like all these stationary pins around her face because I don't want her face to move. I just want the hair to move and then I created these pins in her hair and when you move them you can see it creates this effect. When you come down here you can see all the individual pins that you set and then for the ones I wanted to animate I just put in another wiggle expression. I also used the puppet effect for this shot but in a very different way. So first of all I separated everything and this time I also separated her arm. So I had Photoshop fill in her arm and then masked it out and put it on another layer so that I then could use the puppet effect to only animate her arm and we can see as she moves it it reveals parts of the background of her of her jacket there The last step was to bring all the animations back into Adobe Premiere where I also added sound effects and music and because I'm always asked about time this whole process took like roughly three days to make um, though I also experimented a lot. It can be done quicker, but it also can be done better if you have more time. But speaking of time, let's not lose any more. May I present Lily and the Enchanted Lake, an AI-generated fairy tale. In the small village of Willowbrook, nestled amidst serene landscapes, lived a spirited young girl named Lily. With a crown of sun-kissed curls framing her face, Lily possessed a boundless curiosity that led her on countless adventures. One sun-dappled morning, Lily set out to her favorite spot on the nearby lake. Armed with her trusty fishing rod, she skipped along the worn path, her bare feet sinking into the earth with each joyful step. Reaching the lake's edge, Lily cast her line into the crystal clear waters, her gaze fixated on the undulating ripples. Lily felt a gentle tug on her line. With a steady hand, she reeled in her prize, and as it broke free from the water's embrace, Lily gasped in awe. Before her was a fish like no other she had ever seen. Its iridescent scales shimmered in a kaleidoscope of colors, as if painted by a celestial artist. Moved by a profound respect for the magical creature, Lily gently cradled it in her palms, feeling its lively energy pulsate through her fingertips. She marveled at its beauty, mesmerized by the secrets it held within its shimmering form. With great tenderness, Lily made a decision. She would release the fish back into the water, allowing it to return to its natural habitat. As she gently lowered it, a moment of connection passed between them, a silent understanding shared. And in that moment, as the fish slipped back into the depths of the lake, something extraordinary occurred. The air crackled with anticipation and the water shimmered with newfound brilliance. The lake began to transform, as if awakening from a slumber. The magical creatures of the lake, hidden until now, emerged from their hiding places, joining in a jubilant celebration.
I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you like these kinds of AI filmmaking videos, make sure to subscribe and also check out my other videos. For example, the one about the city on Mars, where we used another AI technique that actually generates 3D models out of 2D images. Oh, and if this video inspired you to try out any of the techniques, please send me a link or tag me in your work. I would love to see it. See you next time.